Well, good afternoon, church family. Just have a couple of things that uh, I'd like to share with you this afternoon, and uh, a couple of just uh, reflections. And really, the first is based on James uh, chapter 1, verses 2 to 5. And I'd like to read that passage uh, right now. Count it all joy, my brothers. And it'd be very appropriate by application to say brothers and sisters. So count it all joy, my brothers, when you face trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And, the stead and let, steadfast let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all, without reproach, and it will be given him. Did you catch that phrase? It begins right there in James chapter 1 and verse 2. It says this, Count it all joy. You know, the word joy reminds me of our current series of messages that we've been going through for, uh, this Sunday will be six weeks now, uh, in the book of Philippians, a, a series of messages that I'm calling Finding and Sustaining Real Joy. And we've been talking about joy, joy that's independent of the circumstances, joy that's Christian joy that's grounded in the gospel and not in our temporary and ever-changing and very uncertain circumstances. Uh, but that word, count it all, the phrase, count it all joy. You know, God uses trials. And God uses difficulties and trials and, and difficulties that we face to grow us. Uh, God uses them uh, to grow us spiritually and, and to deepen and even refine our faith. So trials are painful, yes, but God uses them for good in our lives. God is working in them, and we are to count it all joy when you, fit, when you meet trials of various kinds. And, and have you thought about that? I mean, the, last, the events of the last couple of months have had all sorts of trials of various kinds. There have been, uh, uh, you know, the restrictions on uh, staying home, you know, the, the need to stay home, the, uh, some businesses have been closed, some are starting to reopen, and we're thankful for that, but uh, there have just been all kinds of challenges as a result of the virus. Uh, people, have been getting, people are sick, uh, all manner of difficulties, and there probably are going to be continuing challenges, uh, economic and, and continuing sickness, uh, you know, just because we're being able to get, begin to talk about what it even looks like here at church to begin to start meeting together, Lord willing, next week outside, uh, it doesn't mean that this, uh, this trial is, is gone. Uh, it, there's going to be difficulty probably uh, continuing for some time. Uh, but I want to encourage us that the Bible tells us to count it all joy when we meet trials of various kinds. And this has been a trial, and it probably will be a continuing trial, but God is at work. Uh, it, it says this, For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. God is growing us. And then there's this, uh, I also read verse 5, and it says, if any, um, if any of you lacks wisdom, let us ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and will be given him. You know, one of the things uh, about the uncertainties of the last several weeks uh, is that, you know, we have been reminded repeatedly that we don't know the future. We never did. Uh, but uh, sometimes I think we thought we convinced ourselves that we knew what was coming next. And these events have reminded us that, well, you know, in reality, we don't know the future and we certainly don't control it. And uh, we need wisdom to know how to respond and wisdom to know how to live lives that are pleasing and glorifying to God, to live lives, uh, to be faithful in, in our time, in this moment in history, um, in this unique set of circumstances, we need wisdom. So I'd like to challenge all of you to pray that God would personally give you wisdom, that God would give the leaders of our church, uh, th this church, uh, elders and myself, uh, wisdom, all of our leaders, wisdom, that God would give our uh, national and state leaders wisdom. Ask that God would give wisdom. And with that in mind, I just wanted to share some things that I'm kind of excited about. Uh, we have some if the Lord wills plans. I like to use that phrase. It comes from James 4, 
verses 13 to 16, and I've talked about that quite a bit over the last several weeks. Uh, but, you know, all our plans are uncertain because we don't know the future. But God knows the future. But all our plans are if the Lord wills. And we ought to always remember to say that and remember to, to embrace that truth. If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. But we have some of the Lord, if the Lord wills plans that we're excited about uh, coming up over the next couple of weeks. This Sunday, that's Sunday, May the 3rd, we will be, of course, Lord willing, online only, as we have been for the last, uh, I guess this will be the seventh week, so the, for the last six weeks. And then, Lord willing, weather dependent, and, you know, I guess there are other factors that could play into it, uh, but... Lord willing, we are laying very serious plans to begin an online, or to continue our online services, but also to have an outdoor worship service in the grassy area north of our church building. So just across the small street there, we own that big grassy area behind uh, the church building, and we're planning uh, to, on Sunday, May the 10th, that's Mother's Day, again, Sunday, May 10th, Mother's Day, we're planning uh, to have an outdoor service. And we're going to ask all of us to continue to physically distance ourselves and to follow the guidelines uh, from the, uh, the health officials. Uh, but uh, one of the things that they even suggest is to consider an outside option. So we're excited about the possibility of beginning to uh, see one another again, to see each other's faces, albeit from an appropriate distance, and uh, uh, to, to worship together uh, as a church family. Now... Uh, a few things that are going into plans as we're, you know, well, you know, a week and a half away right now. And just kind of a couple of things, uh, plans that are kind of, that we're working on that I wanted to share with you. Uh, we're planning to continue uh, to make uh, the sermon available online uh, for those who want it. So uh, that will be continually an option for the foreseeable future. We may not do that forever, but at least for... You know, as we're looking forward, we're planning to continue our online presence and that putting the message on YouTube, so that will be available. And then for those that do come to the outdoor service, we're planning to have several options. Uh, some people will probably want to sit in their cars, and we're working on plans to make it so that you could actually not only see, but hear easily through your car's radio um, what uh, the sermon and the music. So we're planning on that. Uh, we're planning on let others will probably be sitting on a picnic blanket or maybe bringing your own chairs. We'd ask you to bring your own if you could. Uh, uh, and sitting out spaced out on that grassy area and, and worshiping the Lord together. And, you know, and we're excited about this uh, as we take the first step, as we begin to lay plans, I guess, for the first step uh, to beginning to meet together. We're excited about this because we rightfully are missing something. Uh, you know, the presence, uh, meeting together on, uh, through technology, the, the things that we've done online for the past uh, uh, month and a half have been wonderful, but, but we're missing something. And Hebrews 10 talks about this. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says this, And let us consider how we may stir, uh, stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day drawing near. You know, there, there really is no substitute for Christian fellowship. There's no substitute for corporate worship. Uh, we are really thankful for what we've been able to do online, but we're missing something, and, and we long to be together again. And we're, again, beginning to lay plans to take a, you know, one step at a time uh, to begin to move back into that uh, perhaps newer normal for a while. It might still feel a little bit different, but being able to worship together um, as a church family. And uh, we're planning to kind of be a phased approach. But we, again, these are all, if the Lord wills, um, we don't know exactly uh, what's going to come next. Uh, we really don't know at all. Uh, you know, we, we have some ideas, but everything is if the Lord wills. Uh, so I would encourage you, uh, again, to be praying, as, as James 1.5 says, pray for wisdom and pray that we would... Uh, as a church, and have wisdom as we begin to take these steps. But I'm, I, I trust you're excited. I'm excited. And uh, uh, look, check back in on uh, the YouTube channel and on Facebook uh, this Sunday for uh, the message, and we're excited about that. And then a week from Sunday, Mother's Day, May 10th, we're, we're super excited to be laying plans uh, for an outdoor worship service. And uh, uh, stay tuned. There'll be more details. We'll try to explain exactly how we want the cars to drive up and all of those kinds of things. And uh, 
kind of give you all the details on that in the, in the week to come. Uh, but wanted to let you know and kind of just let the excitement grow a little bit about that. And uh, also check in on Sunday. I think I'm planning to put out a video that's going to talk a little bit about what will be coming a week from Sunday. Just kind of a teaser on Sunday. So there'll be another video about that. Uh, so thank you so much, church family. Thank you for your flexibility and your patience in this time. Let's all keep praying and remember that God is at work. God bless.